The Scottish Government position remains that construction firms can work, provided they're doing essential work. But meanwhile, others should be planning for the phased restart of construction works. Now, Nicola Sturgeon has made clear that employers must work in genuine partnership with trade unions, because this phased return can only be done if it's done safely. Now, if your site is currently non-unionised, you should be aware that arrangements are being put in place to enable roving trade union safety reps to provide support to these non-unionised workplaces. And here at Workplace Safety Charity Scottish Hazards, we can assist you with information on that, should you need it. Because there's a lot to think about. I mean, standard site operating procedures, they're going to need to be complemented by additional and clear rules to combat COVID-19, which should be discussed and agreed with workforce reps before your return to work and communicated to you and your colleagues. So what additional processes, procedures and practices should you expect to see on sites on your return? As I've already said, there should be ongoing consultation and involvement of trade union reps There'll need to be an ongoing review of risk assessments in light of the continuing risk of COVID-19 and the continuing development of understanding of how it's transmitted and therefore how transmission can be prevented. Premises and equipment, well, they should be reviewed before work is reopened, checking all safety issues after weeks of lack of use, including Legionella risks where water systems may have stagnated. A deep clean before work is recommenced may well be advisable and then processes put in place to maintain those high standards of cleanliness and hygiene thereafter. You should, should expect there to be a review of staffing levels and workloads perhaps moving to you know, staggered or alternating shift patterns. And consideration will need to be given to how you, the workforce, are going to be able to travel safely to and from your work. Then. We've got designated site access and egress points. Physical distance and arrangements, maybe a one-way system, those might need to be implemented. And touch points, such as fingerprint recognition entry systems, they should be reconsidered. Additional hand sanitising arrangements, they'll need to be looked at upon entry and throughout site, as will provision for sanitising tools and equipment that you've used throughout a shift. Welfare facilities, toilet cleaning arrangements, changing, showering, drying facilities, they're all going to need to be reviewed. As will changes to canteen and eating arrangements to ensure physical distancing. I mean, on many sites, provision of catering is going to be stopped, I think, or severely limited, and instead workers are going to be expected to bring food to site with them. The manner in which tasks are undertaken will need to be looked at afresh, with the need to maintain that two metre distance uppermost in mind. Indeed, in phases two and three, it seems that sites will only be able to operate where physical distancing can be maintained without the need for additional PPE. Beyond those phases, we're aware that there will be instances where maintaining this will prove challenging, if not impossible. So we'd expect mitigation measure, measures such as provision of all suitable PPE and RPE in accordance with a safe system of work minimising the duration of such close proximity, assessing the risk, mitigating the hazard to you and others and documenting in writing the balanced argument your employer and workforce reps have considered. Perhaps implementing a permit to work system where the two metre distance can't be maintained. You should expect to be briefed on all new processes and also things like procedures if someone falls ill, the support available on mental health for all employees, support of occupational health services and health surveillance, and the provision of any additional measures for those employees who have special requirements and needs. Any concerns about any of this, that it's not been thought about on your sites, that it's been thought about but it's not been put into practice, then please get in touch. Our contact number is 0800 0015 and if you can share examples of good practice on sites, we'd be keen to hear about them so that we can then share them with others. Please comment below or send us a direct message about that. And together, let's make Scotland a safer place to live and to work.